right, everybody. So today we have Esther Stetson from the University of Missouri, Kansas City School of Dentistry. Esther, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you. But let's go ahead and get started. So um, if you can, please give us a brief summary of your dental school journey. So um, where you're from, where you went to undergrad, what you major in, and did you or did you not take a year off? Okay, so um, originally I'm from Nevada, but I went to undergrad in Arizona okay. at Northern Arizona University. It's up in Flagstaff in the mountains, so everybody always asks me, like, oh, so you really like hot weather? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I was in the mountains. It was nice and cool all the time. Okay. Uh, but anyways, I lived in Flagstaff for about nine years before okay. I moved out here to Missouri to go to dental school. And in Flagstaff, I majored in biomedical science, mm -hmm. and I did not take one year off. I took about six years off. Awesome. <laughs> so okay. Non-traditional there. Okay, so I'm just going to assume that while you were taking your DAT, you hadn't been in school for a while, correct? Um, so the first time, I took the DAT three different times. <laughs> That's the first time though. I took it, um, I took it when I was still in undergrad, um, so I hadn't finished my senior year yet. The second time I took it, I think, was in 2013, and then the last time I took it was in 2017, right before I applied for my third time. Amazing, amazing. Okay, yeah. and so... Okay, so you took it three times. So I'm mm -hmm. sure you've, obviously, you've had a lot of experience with the DAT. What would be your number one tip uh, to give to pre-dance with regards to, like, taking it? Like, do you have, like, a resource? Do you have a certain method methodology that you would use? Like, what's that number one um, tip that you would give? I think one of my biggest weaknesses the first time I took it is that I didn't wait till I was done with undergrad. So I was still learning a few things that was probably on that test, but I also didn't use any resources the first time. And so I didn't do very well. Mm -hmm. um, the third time that I took it and did really well on it, I used a Kaplan course. And then after I took the Kaplan course, I kind of wow. did my own thing where I made a really good schedule and studied on my own. <clears throat> excuse me for a while before I felt um, confident to take my test and so I would just say that you have to get like a really good schedule um, kind of write out when you're going to study how much you're going to study and just really stick to it because like when you're in undergrad you have that accountability like oh I have a test in two weeks so I really got to study but with the dat there's not really a lot of accountability because you're like oh well I can schedule that anytime and so that's another thing is have your test scheduled um, far enough out where you know that you're going to have enough time to study but have it scheduled so you have that accountability and be like well I have to stick to my plan because I have my test scheduled and if I have to reschedule obviously you're going to have to pay a bunch of money and that stuff so yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I thought the Kaplan course was really helpful. A lot of people have told me that Dot Destroyer was really helpful, and I had those books, but I never touched them because I I ended up paying for that Kaplan course. Right, right, right. And so I just like spent my time using the Kaplan course and like those flashcards and stuff, and yep. so I didn't really use Dot Destroyer too much. Awesome, awesome. And so, does your school like do they have any type of like pre dental? programs that you were involved in or that you know about so that if somebody wants to like kind of show face and show that they're interested they can go to um well where i was at nau are you talking about when i was at in undergrad well no no so even like with uh you going to university of missouri kansas city right oh. now like was there any like any way for people to kind of show like hey i exist like do they have any type of like impressions day program or anything like that yeah, so one thing that UMKC has is really cool, um, it's really beneficial to like in-state students because that's really the only people who are utilizing it is um, they have this program where if you know you want to go to dental school, you kind of partner with the dental school and then you pretty much get like, um, <laughs> sorry, my cat. No, you're fine. <laughs> um, you essentially get like guaranteed admission as long as you like go through this program and so that's pretty cool because you know those students don't have to worry like I did for three application cycles being like did I apply to enough schools am I actually going to get in is this money going to be worth it and all that good stuff so that's a really cool program that they have um, but all the faculty at the dental school at UMKC are really really 
kind and open and all of them are super willing to answer questions even if you don't go there so. okay awesome awesome okay and so let's talk about the interview how was mm -hmm. the actual interview day because i know a lot of pre-dents are kind of uh, nervous about about it so i'd like for you to kind of walk us through your day uh yeah day so day. um interview day at umkc um i have to kind of like pick through it because i had quite a few interviews and so mm -hmm remembering like specific pieces of the different ones. Um, but at UMKC, the biggest thing that I remember is that everybody there was really, really kind and very encouraging. Nobody was like, oh, you know, you better make sure you don't say that one word or else you're definitely not gonna get in. You know, they, they were never like that. They were always like, you got this, um, good luck, stuff like that. And then during the interview, um, I think the questions that they asked were really just pretty standard and nothing like out of the ordinary. And um, really, in my opinion, if you're just yourself and you kind of show how much you want that and how much you actually want to be a dentist, you know, no answer is wrong, really. Okay. And, and so quick question. You said that you interviewed at a couple of different schools. So mm -hmm. like what made... UMKC, did I say that right? Yeah, UMKC. Yeah. What, um, what made that interview day kind of like make you say, this is where I want to go? Yeah, um, you know, all, all the different inter interviews I had kind of had their own feel, you know? And so uh, when it came down to like choosing which school I wanted to go to, uh, you know, you go through that process and you're like, well, this school has these benefits, these school that has these benefits, but when it, what it came down to between like the three that I had to really narrow it down, <clears throat> excuse me, down to was just like the feel I had at the school during my interview and at UMKC. And like I was telling you before, a lot of those schools that I interviewed at were like, oh, well, you know, not very positive. And even like the upperclassmen were really like, you know, kind of cutthroat and weren't very happy that like these interview students were there at their school and stuff like that. And so when I went to UMKC, all the faculty, everybody who were, who was interviewing, everybody was, who was helping out with that process were really, really nice and just super supportive. And even the upperclassmen, none of them were like, oh, why are you here? They were all really supportive and just kept saying like, just super positive, just kept saying like, good luck, you got this and stuff like that. And so what it came down to me for, came down for to me was that kind of sense of community and support. And I knew that based on how I was feeling that day at that interview, that I would find a good sense of community and a good support system at UMKC. And I thought that that was really valuable. Awesome, awesome. Okay, and so uh, what year are you currently? I'm a first year. So you're a first year, perfect. Mm -hmm. So granted, I know that, um, you know, things are a little bit different right now uh, <laughs> because of the corona situation. <laughs> But um, so like typically, how would the first year or how has your first year been up until this point with regards to like didactic classes? Um, you know, do you all have any type of clinical experience? And um, are y'all able to even like pick up a handpiece yet? Like different things like that. How has your first year been? Yeah, so first semester was a lot different than this semester has been. Um, like A, mostly because of coronavirus, but anyways. <laughs> Um, the first semester, we had mostly didactic courses. We had one preclinical course, which was morphology, where, you know, you waxed and did all that good stuff, took impressions and all that good stuff. Um, and also first semester, we had preclinical rotations. So we would go down to the clinic and assist um, upperclassmen. And then um, we had, last semester, I had um, a community, community outreach rotation. So we went out to elementary schools and applied fluoride and did screenings. Mm -hmm. So that was first semester. It was kind of just like dipping your toes in. Um, this semester, if it had a gone as planned, um, we had a lot more preclinical labs than last semester. So we had operative, um, complete removable, and occlusion. 
And so in those labs, um, especially in operative, we're picking up a handpiece. We had done um, class ones, class twos, class fives, and a crown prep already um, before we went to remote learning. And in occlusion, we were kind of like making guide tables and um, just learning that different kind of stuff. So occlusion wasn't like super fun or interesting, but it was still getting in the lab, which was cool. Um, and then removable, we're making dentures. And so well, I'll show you, I have mine here. <laughs> yeah, hey. so not that far. <laughs> okay, I okay. Just finished. Uh, and so that was kind of like weird because a lot of us couldn't grab our dentures and bring them home with us. And so our professor was like, oh, you have to work on them at home. And we were like, A, nobody has alcohol right now. B, half of us didn't bring them home. Right. So I got like this little electric wax carver. I got it yesterday and finished my um, lower arch that I was waiting on because I didn't right. have any alcohol. Right. But so yeah, it's second semester was like, it's been a lot of fun because we got to do a lot more preclinical lab stuff. But now, obviously, we don't have that. Hope we're hoping that we get to resume that in the summer, but we'll see. Definitely, now, you you will. We all will. We'll all get back as soon as yeah. possible. It's, this is shifting everybody's whole uh, dental school experience in a, a weird way, but we'll get back to normal soon enough. Totally, for sure, for sure. And so, okay, I'm asking everybody this question from all the different schools. Um, granted. Obviously, you haven't been to any other schools, but what's something that you've seen or at least you've heard from other friends at different general schools um, that you kind of know that UMKC is specific to UMKC, you know, like whether it be the environment, whether it be a course that you all take, like what's something that you can say is, is unique about your school? I'd say one thing that's unique about UMKC is that we have an all student run free dental clinic for the underserved and low income community mm -hmm. in Kansas. Um, so that's really fun because essentially every other Tuesday we go and, you know, serve people. We do extractions, screening, stuff like that. Mostly extractions, but we have root canal nights and we have pedo nights. So that's cool. Um, the big part about it is that it's all student run. So the entire cabinet is students. And then um, we ask faculty um, on a volunteer basis to just come in and, um, you know, uh, missing the word right now, but faculty comes and supervises. Um, but they do that on a volunteer basis. Um, students get the faculty to agree to come volunteer and all that good stuff. So. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I've heard of many other schools who have the same thing, but I'm sure a few do, but that's something that's really cool that we do have. That's awesome, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, and last question of the interview. If you could go back in time and talk to yourself while you were first applying, what's a mm -hmm. piece of advice that you would give to yourself? Um, it was a really long and tough process for me. Um, so I would tell myself to not give up. Uh, everything that I was going through was gonna be worth it in the end. And I would also tell myself to um, not be so humble, not be afraid to accept the support uh, that friends and family are offering because a lot of people wanted to help me out through the process. And, you know, I just grew up in a family where like, I didn't wanna take, you know, if I couldn't give something back. Right. And so it's hard for me to get past that um, kind of cultural barrier, barrier and accept someone's help when I don't have any way to pay them back at that point in time. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Esther, for your help today. Um, if anybody has any questions, what's the best way that they can like reach out to you? Um, they can reach out to me via email or my phone, text, yeah. call, anything really. Okay, okay. I'll write your email in the description box below um, so that, you know, if anybody does have any questions, they could definitely reach out. But Perfect. once again, uh, from the Future DDS family, we want to say thank you so much for your time today. Granted, I know we have a little bit more time, but we still appreciate you uh, giving us your time and helping us today. Yeah, thanks a lot. You have a good one. You too, you too. Everybody, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Um, if you have any questions for us over here at Future DDS, you always can shoot us a message on Instagram at underscore Future DDS, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. But other than that, 
We'll see y'all next time.